Hi, it's Dr. Tiffany. I hope that this vlog finds you well. So today's topic is going to be on sleep paralysis. Now, if you've ever experienced sleep paralysis, you know it's absolutely terrifying. Sleep paralysis occurs upon going to sleep or waking up. During sleep paralysis, you are just like the words say, paralyzed, but you're conscious. So that is absolutely terrifying because you cannot move. You cannot grab your spouse and say, hey, shake me out of this. It's absolutely terrifying. It lasts for about one to two minutes, thankfully. But when you're in that moment and if you've never experienced it before, it feels like you're going crazy. And those two minutes feel like eternity. Many people feel like they're dying when they experience it for the first time, like something is wrong with them. Others from different cultures may say, I feel like I was possessed by a demon because somebody was on top of me and I couldn't move my body. It is terrifying. What makes it even more terrifying is that sleep paralysis is often accompanied by hallucinations. Now, upon going to sleep, those are called hypnagogic hallucinations. Upon waking up, it's called hypno pompic hallucinations. Now we actually have words for them. <laughs> so that means a lot of the population has experienced this. In fact, 10% of the population suffers from sleep paralysis. And I wouldn't say suffers, but experiences it. And it's really unpleasant, but they experience it 10% of the population chronically. Now about actually most of us will experience sleep paralysis at least one time in our life. So if you haven't had it yet, good thing to know that there's this video on it and you can reference it if you need to later and to know that if it happens to you, it is scientific and it will pass. So I will talk to you a little bit about the science behind it. All right. So we have five stages of sleep. The last stage of sleep being REM. The first four stages really focus on the rejuvenation of the body and the muscles, while REM sleep focuses on the rejuvenation of the brain as it processes and digests all experiences and information. Now, when we are in the non-REM sleep, and also with REM sleep as well, we don't want to act out our dreams. Now, primarily, our dreams come in REM sleep. Now, we don't want to act them out, so we have these awesome neurotransmitters, GABA neurotransmitters, that keep us paralyzed. We don't want to act out um, driving on the freeway and losing control. That would be no benefit to us. Though people have parasomnias, such as sleepwalking or night terrors, but I think of all the parasomnias, that sleep paralysis is definitely one of the most terrifying. So I think it definitely wins that one. So let's go back to the brain. All right, so let me tell you about the brain going through sleep transitions. I'm gonna give you this corny example. So here's the brain, woo, and here's the body. So when we're going into sleep, what happens with somebody who's experiencing sleep paralysis, now we have those five stages of sleep, so it's gonna look like one, two, three, four, five. That's in theory, okay? So when we're having our stages of sleep, what happens with somebody who's experiencing those hallucinations and that sleep paralysis is that the body is jumping into that stage of sleep first. So essentially, it is out of sync. So now the body is going into that paralyzed stage of sleep while the brain is still awake, and that's why you can't move. It happens for about two minutes, okay? And then finally, the body and the brain sync up, and then we go through the rest of the stages of sleep, of sleep in perfect synchronicity. All right. So now when you're having the hallucinations and it's occurring when you're waking up, it's a little bit different. It doesn't go with the body first, right? We're already in sleep. So as we're waking up, the brain becomes conscious and then we're paralyzed. Does that make sense? And then finally the body catches up and we are awake. Okay. That would be after the REM sleep cycle. And of course the beginning one would be going into stage one sleep. So naturally you get the point that, you know, we're not going to have any sleep paralysis and we're going to go through the sleep cycles completely in sync. All right. Everything's in perfect harmony and not one is beating the other. All right. So when you're having those hallucinations, remember that one is beating the other, but it's only slightly off about one to two minutes. And that, yes, like I said earlier, can feel like eternity, but it's always a good way to think about it. The brain 
is awake while the body's becoming paralyzed into the sleep cycle and then finally it catches up. Okay, if you can go to sleep after that because sometimes the event's really terrifying. And then of course, second time around, remember that the brain is gonna wake up first and this is where we have those hippopompic hallucinations, but the body is still paralyzed because it's in sleep mode. So what's going on right now is that those GABA neurotransmitters are firing, keeping you paralyzed because you don't wanna act out your dreams, right? Ugh, okay, so we're in a rut here, but eventually it will come back into sync together. Now, how do we combat this? Well, it's really challenging. So people who experience it on a chronic basis just know what to expect. They know not to be terrified and that they understand that there's a science behind it. So some people have told me in order to wake up out of it, they start using their pinky, small little movements to finally get the bigger movements. But a lot of others decide not even to fight it because it's even more frustrating and sometimes even more scary. But what they decide to do is focus on some deep breathing. Now I have some videos on deep breathing so you can reference them, but it really helps calm them down and eventually they kind of just fall back into the sleep cycle because they know it's something that's scientific and it's not like they're going crazy in their own mind because they're seeing things. This is something that happens on a regular basis. Like I said, we have names for it, so it's usually a common occurrence and it is in this case. So what can cause it? Um, stress can cause it, high cortisol levels can cause it. If you're noticing yourself varying your sleep cycle, going from day shift to night shift or vice versa, of course, chronic insomnia can be a component to it, substances can, and some behavioral health diagnoses can contribute as well. Um, there's not necessarily a treatment for it. Like I said, it's more like working around it and understanding what it is. Um, but for those of you who haven't had that experience, just know in the back of your mind, if it ever does happen to you, it's just a scientific thing. I know it's hard to remember that and to conjure it up in the moment, but if we prime ourselves for it, hey, there's a chance that we can just get through it with less distress than otherwise. So that's about it for today. Um, if you have any questions about other parasomnias or if you have any questions on sleep paralysis and how it works and operates, please put the questions below. And if you want to subscribe and you haven't yet, I encourage you to do so. And I hope that you have a blessed week and always remember to push the love forward.